Hello. Hi, We're guys. trying again. Tim Bratton here and my lovely, beautiful wife. Her name is beautiful. There we go. Guys. Okay, so we were just live. and We were just live, but we lost you, we but we were back. We were talking and we looked, and there was only two minutes of it. So let's go back to ways to protect your marriage. It wasn't the rapture, because we're still here. <laughs> All right. Okay, just guys. the video fail, guys. I'm Sorry. Tim. This is Veronica. The little message, the little about crap play. Building a fair-proof marriage God's way. John 10.10 10 says that the devil will come. He comes to... He so got the job of destroying, lying... Stealing, destroying marriages, destroying lives. That's what he wants to do. That's what he's here for, to destroy marriages. Why does he hate marriage? Because it's from God. But God came to bring life and bring life more abundantly. Jesus, the devil wants to destroy. How do we stop the devil from destroying marriages? First of all, we want to do what God wants us to do in his, in his Bible. And we're human. The devil comes around and says, you can't judge. He starts trying to get us to justify things going on in our marriage. You can't put up with that. You're better than that. Pride. That's what happened to him. So we start thinking, mm, maybe he's right. We can't go there. What are six things we can do to keep All from going right. there? All right. So we, um, we're talking about how infatuation happens. So you need more than love to protect your marriage. You need to build a strong marriage. And to do that, you, it's intentional. You have to be intentional about it. First thing is to invest time and energy in your marriage. When you right. make a new connection and you first start dating, you want to spend all this time together and you spend all this energy to make it work, but the connection work, but then you get married and you just go on about your business and stop spending time together. You fall into just complacency. So be intentional with your marriage. Uh, it's 15 minutes a day, eye to eye, one evening a week, one day a month alone, and one weekend per season you should spend alone. Got to do it. Don't let the kids stop. Got to do it for the marriage, Even guys. with for children, even marriage. with small children, you've got to do it. You've got to prioritize your marriage. It's better for the kids. Your kids want you to love each mm -hmm. other. And then it's so much healthier for them not to be the center of they your universe. They want you to love each other and have a great marriage. But your marriage. husband, take care of each other first. God, spouse. Kids. Good kids, yeah, understand. Okay, um, number two, understand and accept the differences. So, you know, men and women are created differently, aren't they? Sometimes, enjoy the differences. Sometimes we get a little frustrated because they're not like we are, but just don't, don't. Just love them and understand they're different than you are, and that's why you were attracted to them to begin with, and, and that's the way God created them. Number three, pursue common interest. Have um, there were things you used to do together. What do you do now together? You may have lost track of your common dreams you had. But what was your dreams when you before you got married? I remember, you sit down and say, "I want to do this, I want to do that." What happened to them? Are you still going doing it? Are you doing the things that you liked, the interests you liked? Are you still doing those things like you did before you got married? And have you talked to your wife, asked her what she wants to do, what her goals are, what her thoughts are? And number four, build togetherness. So, and women are always writing in to the penners. Um, they, well, they often get letters and visits from women saying they are so frustrated with their husband's lack of spiritual and emotional connection. So, 15 minutes a day, reading your Bible together, praying together, talking to her. Those are ways to build togetherness. Number five, have and fun. So the fun. Have fun and play together. Number five, have fun and play together. So... Enjoy each act other. Act like kids. Laugh. Act like, like kids. We all have Look, kids. Play. I'm still a kid. Play. He's the biggest kid I'm 63. Have, so we have, have kids with each other. Play with each other. Exactly. Tease. Not no tease. Tickle. Have fun. But don't tease. But don't Take her shoes and socks where, off and tickle her bottom of her feet. Know where her... When she disobeys you. Have fun. Know where her thresholds are when it comes yeah, to teasing. Exactly. Okay. Number six. Renew your commitment to each other. Love is not a feeling. It's a commitment, it's a commitment. to behave lovingly to right. each other, nurtured by respect, tenderness, and thoughtfulness, damaged by sarcasm, criticism, neglect, and disregard. Right. And what are some of the things? So we honor your commitment by doing what, sweetie? Never giving up. Caring for each other more than you care for yourself. Not wanting what you don't have. Not strutting. Not having a swollen head. Not forcing yourself Pride. on her. Not always thinking about me first. Don't fly off the handle. No keeping scores of wrongdoings. And, um, don't revel when she's trying to come to you with... Uh, and and um, 
don't take pleasure, I mean, taking pleasure in the flowering of the truth. Putting up with anything and trusting God always. Always. That's number always one. Always trust God. Trust God, because he put you two together, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, God's plan is one marriage for life. One man, one woman for life. That's God's plan, guys. And the devil wants to kill that. Devil, devil wants 10, 10 divorces for every marriage. That's what, you, that's what the devil wants. Because he wants to destroy marriage. And crack clay is helping Christians and non-Christians to build a solid marriage. God's way. And then putting each other's needs before our own. That is so important.